Okay, TM Nation, these are the Skull Candy Eco Buds, and now that I think about it, this is Skull Candy's first release of 2024. I've had my pair for a few days, and in general, they are unlike any other pair of earbuds that I own at the moment, mainly because of the focus on being healthier on the planet by limiting the use of batteries and increasing the amount of sustainable material used in creating them. They retail for $39.99, so they are on the more budget-friendly side of Skull Candy's lineup, but at that price point, these are going to offer you up to eight hours of use on a charge. They are IPX4 certified, so that'll do just fine in protecting them from water and sweat if you happen to get caught out in the elements or if you're doing exercise and you start sweating. These also feature an integrated USB Type-C cable on the case for charging. You wanna make sure that you watch the full video because I am gonna talk more about that cable and I will tell you about more of the things that I like about the earbuds and some things that I don't like. But before I go ahead and show you what will come inside of the box, they do feature three different EQ modes that you can choose based on what you wanna hear. Inside of the box, you get your normal stuff, including the user manual, different sized ear tips that you can swap out if needed, and of course you'll get the case along with the earbuds. And again, the design of the case isn't like anything else that I've tried from Skull Candy in the past. It doesn't have a lid or anything like that. You just slap the earbuds inside of it and the magnets pretty much keep them in place. The form factor overall is really small. As you can see, this case is much smaller than the rail case, and it's even smaller than the Dime 3 case, which was the most compact pair of earbuds I had in my collection until I picked up the Eco Buds. Also, there are no batteries in the case at all, so it can't charge the earbuds by itself. When it's time for you to juice them up, you simply use the integrated USB cable, which I was not a huge fan of at first, but it has grown on me. Again, like I said earlier, these earbuds are focused on being sustainable, so eliminating batteries in the case significantly reduces their carbon footprint, and I'm really not losing out on much because I can easily charge them by plugging them into my iPhone 15 Pro or any of my other Android devices. Also, as I mentioned earlier, you can get up to eight hours of use on a charge with these, which is not bad at all, but they also do feature rapid charging that will give you about two hours worth of use from only 10 minutes worth of charging. The earbuds are similar in design to what you'll get with a pair of the rails, as they are slightly larger than the Dime 3 earbuds, but they have never felt overly large or heavy in my ears. The ear tips on them were snug out of the box, so I didn't need to switch them out for a nice noise isolating fit, and I've been able to use them for all of my normal tasks without any notable issues. I've worn them for four to five hour casual listening sessions, I've walked, jogged, and jumped rope using them, and they handled all of that extremely well. Even though they don't have any ear hooks or wings, they do have these little ridges on the insides of the earbuds that for me help keep them in place even when I'm engaged in strenuous activity. Now I did have to reposition them once or twice during my 30 minute jump rope workout, but that was only towards the end when I started sweating pretty heavily, which really is not that bad at all in comparison to other similar earbuds that I've tested. The playback controls with these are executed by touch, and one thing that I like about them is that each different tap plays a different tone so that you can keep track of how many you've completed. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but with these earbuds you have pretty much all of your different playback controls. They have long tap, they have single tap, double tap, triple tap, even quadruple tap, so sometimes you may not remember how many times that you actually touch the earbuds, but with the different tones, that does help. For Bluetooth connection, these are using 5.2, which is not the latest or greatest, but I haven't experienced any noticeable latency watching YouTube videos or Amazon Prime movies through either of those apps on my iOS or Android devices. However, they don't have a built-in low latency gaming mode, so these may not be the best choice for a hardcore mobile gamer. The call quality with the Eco Buds has also been respectable in my opinion. Based on my testing, they seem to do a pretty good job at focusing on speech while rejecting some of your ambient noise. But as always, I did take samples just so that you guys can judge for yourselves. Let's check them out. All right guys, so right now I have the earbuds paired to my iPhone 13 mini. And as you can see, the audio that you're hearing is coming directly from the microphones on them. Now I'm not gonna do any type of editing to this sample, 
so this should give you a pretty good idea of how they will perform in a relatively quiet room. And now I have some simulated background noise playing in the background. This part of the test is aimed at seeing how well the microphones on these earbuds can focus on my speech while rejecting some of that noise. And I'll go ahead and be quiet for just a second so that you guys can judge how loud the noise is. All right, so I'll go ahead and start talking again. So again, this part of the test is aimed at seeing how well these earbuds can focus on your speech while rejecting some of the noise going on around you during voice calls. Now moving on and touching on the sound quality, like I said earlier, these do have three different EQ modes, which are music, bass boost, and podcast. I never use podcasts as it's airy and flat sounding. The music mode sounds okay, but the bass boost mode is where it's at for me. To my ears in this EQ mode, it doesn't just enhance the bass, it also makes everything else a lot brighter. Here the bass is stronger than some of the much more expensive Skull Candy earbuds that I own, such as the Sesh ANCs and Grinds. The sound signature is also bright and warm just the way that I like it. For the types of music that I listen to, I can hear those background instruments well, vocals come through clearly, and like I said, the bass really caught me by surprise with how these not only punch when they need to, but can also produce those lower end rumbles that a lot of earbuds can't. The output with these is great too, they get more than loud enough for my personal liking at max volume, so I typically set them at around 75% and this is perfect. Now I will say that these are not the best with sound separation because these are not audiophile grade earbuds guys, but for the average user who wants a nice clean sounding pair of earbuds with a focus on the bass, these will not disappoint. Taking everything into consideration, these are a more bare bones pair of earbuds. You aren't getting ANC, transparency, or access to the Skull Candy app, but the sound quality is very good for the price and the battery life on a charge is also good. The design isn't gonna be for everyone with the fact that the case really doesn't do anything but house the earbuds and it can't provide any additional charges to the earbuds without external power. But if you can deal with those aspects of these earbuds, I for sure think that these are some of the best sounding pairs of Skull Candy earbuds for under 50 bucks at the moment. Before you get on out of here, if you rock with the channel and your boy Tech Mo, hit that subscribe button and knock that notification bell out so you won't miss any of my uploads. Welcome to TM Nation. Peace.